it was in September, September 2013, when there was a, a phone call into the office from the local Yeovil police, in fact, saying that uh, there'd been re a report of the remains of a, a lead coffin and a body had been found near Ilchester. And uh, could we do something about it? I knew it was a big signal, but what I'd done then is um, dug out my spade <laughs> and I come to a bit of lead. So I thought, ah, lead for scraps, just a job. So I'll get my spade underneath it and try digging it up, and it just worked out bigger and bigger. And the police were well baffled by it, so they uh, passed it on to the archaeologist. And uh, looking at it, it was only about 12 inches down, um, and it was in the area just below where the plough had, had disturbed that part of the field. It was clear that uh, the, the lid of the coffin had been uh, compressed. Uh, the detectress, when they'd found it, had, had lifted the corner of the lid so we could see that it was actually full of soil. We went in, excavated around the lead coffin because basically we wanted to understand was it a coffin in a pit or next to a building or part of a cemetery or whatever. So we excavated a two metre square all the way around it um, to confirm that it actually was in, in its original position. And then with the help of the local farmer, we managed to lift it on block with a machine, put it in the transit van and then ship it back here to the Somerset Heritage Centre. Lead coffins are fairly unusual in Somerset. The last one I was involved with was, oh, it's got to be 15 or more years ago, but Shepton Mallet. So the plan is to set up an excavation in the laboratory, do it in a controlled conditions, and then sample and bag up all the material and deal with it hopefully in a day. It's 19. I've been looking at um, lead-lined coffins and stone sarcophagi from around Britain um, and analysing the soil or the, the silt uh, and any sort of adhering residues to look to see about the treatment of the body and we've been finding that um, they wrapped the body in, in textiles but these were had resins incorporated in them. Uh, sometimes they have like layers of plaster, sort of lime or gypsum as well. Um, and these, so far, have only been in the lead coffins and the stone sarcophagi. So this is a fantastic opportunity, you know, to actually to do um, a gridded sampling pattern and, and to see whether or not anything like that remains in this one. One, two, two three. Oh, look at this. It's looking good. You can see more of the skull fragment at the top here. Um, and running through the middle, you can see the line of the vertebrae. So that's, that's the backbone. It's so dry, you're not going to be able to no, see much. You think it's been embedded in. Of course, it's got really firmly compacted there, hasn't it? That's my one twenty. Yeah, that's right. And there's something else appearing just there. Really... What we're doing now is we're removing the compacted soil on the upper part of the, the skeleton, and we're now at the point where we're having to work our way through this very sticky clay which is not easy digging. Um, we're taking it down in spits. The whole area is gridded out into 20 centimetre lengths. And then the fines from each grid square are kept separately. We're bagging all the soil and any disarticulated loose bone is uh, also then bagged by its square. Look at me, smart. Uh, this is really interesting. So, like I say, I've never found anything like this, and I've never seen anything like this before. <laughs> well, they seem to think it's um, possibly, uh, well, not quite sure if it's a male or a female, but probably a sort of uh, a younger body, sort of in the early 20s. You know, your wisdom tooth comes through um, anything from sort of 18 to 
or a sort of mid twenties, late twenties. So we we have an adult by the looks of it from from that rather grubby evidence. Uh, support the bottom, yeah. otherwise it might it might, it might ping there. Break. Yeah. Oh, oh, snap. oh that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Do you think? Well, the excavation of the, the coffin has taken several hours and uh, from lifting the lid off uh, to then seeing just how much of the material had been compressed because uh, each side had had some compaction from when it had been in the, in the ground. Many years of tractors back and forth has, has caused a lot of compaction. But underneath here, you can see that the central part of the, the body is still there. The skull is completely crushed down. Various pieces are, are visible. That's the right-hand side of the body there. And uh, top right leg, lower right leg. Here is the left-hand side, left leg. And then the legs are actually crossed at the bottom. That's the lower left leg. Um, in the middle, the sacrum has moved down main vertebra is there, the ribs across and an arm across there we think possibly. The bottom end, interesting things have come up here, some big chunks of, uh, of rusty old iron um, indicating what we we're not quite sure of with a large piece but there's really good evidence also of um, uh, hobnails. We think there's uh, even the potential of between the sole and the heel. There's half a dozen at one end and maybe ten at the other so that could represent a, a hobnail boot that's been put into the coffin. Um, one thing we will say though is that some of the bones are in completely the wrong places. Things have moved around. And why that has happened or when that happened, we're not sure about. Yeah, this was a quite a costly thing to do, uh, even though it's not, you know, beautifully decorated as some of them are. And it was, you know, it seems to have been, probably have been a liner for a, a wooden, mm, wooden yeah. coffin this wouldn't have been a, a, a cheap option. They must have had some, some degree of wealth or, or status that made it uh, sufficient for them to be treated in this way. We'll take the, the bones to the University of Bradford um, where uh, members of, of the BARC, the Biological Anthropology Research Centre, will clean them and uh, then look at all the questions about the ageing, sexing, um, check to see if there's any pathologies, if there's any um, uh, signs of disease. I mean, we've not come across anything obvious. And then um, we're hoping that the teeth and some of the ribs, they look in reasonable condition, enough for people to do isotope analysis. And that will tell us things about diet and mm. also hopefully about um, whether the person is likely to have been a migrant or not. And then my personal interest is the actually the bags of soil. Uh, <laughs> Which of is which why there we, are many. Oh yes, and why there we collected many. them so very carefully. Um, I'm going to hopefully subsample that and then um, do gas chromatography mass spectrometry to do organic residue analysis to see if uh, whether there's any traces of the, the way the body was treated remaining because we have been finding evidence in both lead coffins and stone sarcophagi of the use of resins sort of with, embedded in the textile wrappings. So we've got a little bit more to do, a little bit more excavation, examine this, and then we've got to draw the bones, get the bones fully recorded, re-photographed, uh, and then we'll bag them up, and uh, they'll be sent off for analysis. <laughs>